Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be covering the mysterious and wonderful trap drawer ants. I got these from Ansaras at the recent Great Ant Exhibition, where I also got a Mantis and Jumping Spider, which I covered last week. When I bought the trap drawer queen, they were kind enough to give me this little protein tube and a pipette. This is very important, as it's crucial to feed trap drawer queens as they're founding, as they're semi-colostral. And for those of you who don't know, semi-colostral just means that the queen will go out and hunt for food instead of relying on fat stores from her wings and muscle decay. But honestly, that's one of the reasons why I love trap drawer ants, as seeing the queen hunt is one of the coolest things you ever see. But okay, that's it with the boring stuff, and now it's time to unwrap her and show you guys what she looks like. The species is Odontomachus claris, which are, I believe, only available at Ants R Us, which is why on their website they are labelled Ants R Us exclusive. So if you really like the look of this species, then I'd recommend going to Ants R Us and ordering a queen yourself. Of course, only get them if you are prepared, as Odontomachus are a fairly hard species to keep, partly due to them being semi-colostral, and also temperature, humidity, and their natural habitat. And when they're starting out, you also need to feed them smaller prey like fruit flies instead of bigger ones like mealworms or crickets. This is because mealworms and crickets have the ability to fight back, oh well, more than a fruit fly does, and the queen is a very important member as she's the only one that can lay eggs and, you know, prolong the colony. So if she gets hurt by a cricket or any other prey item that you give her, then the colony is basically doomed. Okay, so obviously she's semi-claustral, so she'll need a space to go hunt. So, I'm going to move her into this Cosance Antimus Outworld Micro. These are only £5, I'd recommend getting them, they're so good. Um, you can get 10% off with code DORSET10 at checkout, it's just great. I definitely recommend getting them, as even though they are cheap, they're very good quality, as the connector is made out of TPU, which is basically just a more flexible plastic, so it can fit different size test tubes. As you can see, she's got a cocoon, which should turn into a worker in about a week or two, and then she's also got some smaller larvae and a big larvae and some eggs. So she's got quite a lot of brood, which means that she'll need quite a lot of food to feed them. I'm using fruit flies, as she can kill them pretty easily, and they can't hurt her or her brood. Although I may have to use quite a few of them, it's fine as well. As you just saw, there are absolutely tons of them. And just like that, she caught the fruit fly. Although it wasn't that hard because it was in the tweezers still, she'll have way more to catch in the future, so she'll have her work cut out for her. The queen takes absolutely no risks when picking in her prey. As you can see after she puts it next to the brood, she snaps her jaws on it about 10 to 15 times just to make sure it's dead. Then she has a little feed so she's not hungry anymore. And then after that she'll give the rest of the fruit fly to her larvae so they can eat it. Unlike a lot of species, these guys will literally place the protein source on top of their larvae so they can eat it from basically on their belly. Which is pretty cool to see. Of course though, ants don't just need protein, as they also need carbohydrates, usually in the form of sugar. So I'll give this girl some sugar water, and well, just to say, she spent 25 minutes drinking from this. It's safe to say that she really liked the sugar. Even when I moved her to get a better camera angle, she still just didn't care and just continued to drink. Just so you know, this video right here is sped up to 2000% of the original speed. Now I don't know about you, but I'd say she thoroughly enjoyed that sugar water. After that, the cotton's basically dried, so I'll take it out and then I'll feed her again in a few days, but in the meantime, I'll leave her in a dark place so that she doesn't get disturbed. A few days later, and the cocoon is bursting at the seams. The larvae are much bigger as they've eaten tons of fruit flies, and the queen is still on the hunt. And she's even laid some eggs, which is a really good sign because it means that the colony will continue to grow at a steady rate even after these workers are closed. Now, right here, my heart dropped, as I saw the cocoon in the outworld, and I thought the worst. The queen's gone and just abandoned her cocoon, for no reason. 
but when I lifted the protective cover, I was filled with joy, as what I saw was her first lunatic, ready to go and defend the colony. The worker's only a few hours old, and its exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet, so it's still quite yellow. She's fairly small, but she is more than capable of taking care of the larvae and hunting for the queen. In a few days or weeks, she'll be the one hunting and the queen can just have a nice cosy life sitting in the testy all day and laying eggs. But before that comes, the queen must work hard, as I recently gave her a mealworm, obviously I pre-killed it, but she had to work hard to bring that in and bring it to her larvae, as her worker isn't quite strong enough yet. The colony's life has just started, but they're well on their way to becoming an established colony and ruling any terrarium that they'll end up in. Without a doubt, this queen has spirit, and I know she'll go far, so make sure to subscribe so you can see her journey as she becomes a ruler of a mighty empire. But that's it for now, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!